Thank you for buying a genuine Norasil product. In this video, we'll talk about maintaining your Series 1001 liquid level controller. It's normal for your controller to experience normal wear and tear, so you should inspect your controller about once a year or more frequently in harsh applications. If the controller is used in high paraffin service or interface control with a horizontal displacer, you should remove and inspect the body of the controller after about three months of service to check for debris buildup. And then you can gauge future inspection intervals by the buildup of debris that has occurred in the initial three months of service. Before you attempt any repairs, you need to isolate the controller from the process by shutting off the output and supply lines to the controller. If the controller is electric, turn off and lock out all electrical power to the controller, then release the process pressure. The controller parts are rugged and they'll withstand a great deal of wear under normal operating conditions, so they won't need to be repaired very often. However, normal maintenance is important. In normal service, the O-rings and the bearings on the main shaft should last for many years. If a leak occurs, you can easily replace the O-rings with Nora Seal's Level Seal Kit. To take apart your level controller, you'll first need to release all tension on the balance spring and remove it, along with the upper spring retainer. Then remove the adjusting knob and the stud bolt that's holding the adjusting knob from the case. Next, you'll take off the lock nut from the flapper bar. Slide the flapper bar off of the pivot pin. As you're doing this, make sure you don't remove the pivot pins from the case. We press fit them into the case, and they're not meant to be removed. Also, don't remove the sensitivity fulcrum or the thumb screw. Now, remove the lock nut from the torque bar and slide the torque bar off of the shaft. Hold the level adjusting bar in place and loosen the two cap screws until the level adjusting bar is free on the shaft. You don't need to remove or adjust the adjusting screw unless you're converting the case mounting. You can simply slide the level adjusting bar from the shaft and then slide the spacer from the shaft. Finally, remove the two cap screws holding the case to the body and remove the case from the body. To reassemble your level controller, you first need to mount the case to the body with two cap screws and then tighten the screws. Then slide the spacers on the shaft. If the level adjusting screw has been removed or adjusted during disassembly, position the screws so that there is an equal amount of thread showing above and below the level adjusting bar. The cap on the level adjusting screw will be pointing away from the two cap screws on the shaft end of the level adjusting bar. Slide the level adjusting bar onto the shaft against the spacer with a level adjusting screw on the opposite side of the controller body. Loosely secure, but do not tighten the cap screws that hold the bar to the shaft. Temporarily slide the torque bar onto the shaft and position the level adjusting bar so that the torque bar is parallel with the displacer arm when the round tip of the level adjusting screw is touching the torque bar. Next, remove the torque bar and tighten the cap screws that secure the level adjusting bar to the shaft, starting with the screw nearest the slotted end of the level adjusting bar. Now make sure you don't over tighten. Now slide the torque bar back onto the shaft with a countersunk hole for the spring retainer facing down. Secure the torque bar with a lock nut leaving 1 16th of an inch clearance between the nut and the torque bar. Don't tighten this nut because the torque arm needs to be able to move freely. Slide the flapper bar onto the pivot pin. If you're converting the case mounting, remove the thumb screw from the sensitivity fulcrum and screw it into the opposite side of the fulcrum. Try to keep the fulcrum positioned in the same place on the flapper bar. Follow the instructions on the tag on the inside of the controller. Secure the flapper bar with a lock nut, but don't tighten it because the flapper bar needs to be able to move freely. Install the stud bolt and lower spring retainer in the lower pilot case. The bolt stud will be on the left for a left hand mount and on the right for a right hand mount. Finally, install the spring and upper spring retainer, centering the retainer pin with a hole in the torque bar. To remove your pneumatic pilot, first you'll remove the supply and output lines from the rear of the controller. In a 1001 controller, the pilot is held in place by two cap screws mounted through the top of the case. Remove these cap screws and remove the pilot from the case. For the 1001A and 1001XL controllers, the pilot is held in place by four cap screws in the pilot clamp. Remove these four cap screws and remove the pilot from the case. If you need to rebuild the pilot, Norasil offers a convenient pilot rebuild kit. Alternately, the pilot can be totally replaced. Pilot action may be converted from the snap to throttle or vice versa by using a pilot conversion kit. For best results and to protect your warranty, use only genuine Norasil part kits or pilots. Reinstall the pilot by reversing instructions. While the pilot gasket may not need replacing on the 1001A and 1001XL controllers, replacement is recommended. 
One quick warning about your pilot. Do not try to replace a pneumatic pilot with an electric pilot or vice versa. Pneumatic and electric cases are not interchangeable. Before you do anything, you'll need to disconnect the power supply circuit. Once you've done that, you can disconnect the wire leads and remove the switch by first taking off the conduit coupling on top of the case, then the switch nut, washer, and the O-ring. Place the new switch assembly in the case. Then put the O-ring washer and switch nut back on and tighten it. Replace and tighten the conduit coupling and connect the lead-in wires and you're done. Completely disassemble the controller the way I showed you. When you reassemble it, place the level adjusting screw at a 90 degree angle to that in the original configuration and screw the thumb screw in the opposite side of the fulcrum. The level adjusting bar, level adjusting screw, fulcrum, torque bar, flapper bar, balance spring, and stud bolt will all be on opposite sides of the case from the original configuration. To convert the pilot action, first you need to relax all tension on the balance spring. Then remove the lock nut from the flapper bar and slide the flapper bar off of the pivot pin. Remove the thumb screw from the sensitivity fulcrum and replace it in the opposite hole on the fulcrum where you took it out. Next. Replace the flapper bar on the pivot pin on the opposite side of the case with a thumb screw on the sensitivity fulcrum pointing out. Secure the flapper bar with a lock nut, but don't tighten it because the flapper bar needs to be able to move. Finally, adjust the tension on the balance spring. First, you need to remove the body from the controller assembly the way we talked about earlier. Then remove the two bearing blocks in the shaft and remove and discard the O-rings in the body, on the shaft, and in the bearing blocks. To reassemble the level controller body, use new O-rings and install the large O-ring over the threads of the bearing block. Install the new Teflon backup rings in each bearing block, pressing them into place with a 5 16 inch diameter rod. Install new O-rings in each bearing block, pressing them into place with the same rod. If you have trouble, try applying a bit of oil to the O-rings. Replace the outboard bearing block on the side of the body away from the case mounting bolt holes. Insert the shaft into the body and firmly seat in the outboard bearing. Replace the remaining bearing block on the body and tighten. Finally, reattach the body to the case as I demonstrated a few minutes ago. More information on maintaining your Norseal Series 1001 liquid level controller is available in our new operations and maintenance manual at www.norseal.com.